And now you're seeing a replay of uh, the landing uh, from uh, the uh, cameras that were on one of the all-terrain vehicles. You can see how close uh, the all-terrain vehicles actually were in position. And now uh, the all-terrain vehicle uh, speeding uh, to the uh, site of the capsule to begin the recovery of the crew. Again, this is a replay of the landing uh, that occurred uh, just over an hour ago. And now uh, a view of uh, the Soyuz capsule. This was prior to the time that, that the search and recovery uh, forces uh, arrived in the all-terrain vehicle as they arrived in close proximity to the Soyuz to begin the extraction of the crew. And you can see uh, the um, antenna that uh, deployed uh, shortly after landing. That's a uh, basically a radio beacon antenna uh, to help uh, recovery forces locate the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, you just saw a moment ago the uh, actual landing of the Soyuz from afar from a uh, television camera on one of the all-terrain vehicles that was in close proximity uh, to the landing zone at the time of touchdown. Again, this is a replay uh, of video captured about an hour ago, uh, looking at uh, one of the uh, all-terrain vehicles uh, belonging to the uh, search and recovery forces as it moved into place to begin uh, the work to extract uh, the Soyuz TMA-15 crew, the Expedition 21 crew, Roman Romanenko, Frank Dewina, and Bob Thirsk. Again, uh, typically the scene at a uh, Soyuz landing site uh, would consist of a number of Russian Mi-8 helicopters forming a circle around the Soyuz vehicle. In this case, uh, because of the weather conditions today, uh, the helicopter assisted recovery was replaced uh, by all-terrain vehicles as uh, they uh, sped into place uh, from the landing zone uh, and from their deployment uh, positions uh, in Arkalik, uh, some 80 kilometers southwest of the landing site. 
Again, this is a replay. You can see uh, some of the uh, initial uh, recovery team members now making their way toward the Soyuz capsule uh, to begin the process of uh, extracting the crew.